In today's show, Bitcoin tumbles back below $36,000 as ARK Invest Kathy Wood addresses Bitcoin's regulatory fears. And also, as you can see here, just the other day, we touched 40 k before dropping 12%. I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis for you here in today's show. And as Plan B points out, nobody who bought Bitcoin and hodled for four plus years ever lost money ever. That, my friend, is a fact. And as Altcoin Daily points out, over $2.2 billion worth of Bitcoin option contracts expire today. Expect volatility, which is what we're witnessing. And speaking of volatility, crypto analyst Justin Bennett says more volatility incoming and warns some traders will be shaken out of the market. That's why it's so important to remain with strong hands and hodl. Also in today's show, Bitcoin crash reveals the resiliency of the crypto markets and the lack of systemic risk, according to macro guru Raul Powell. That's right, the former Goldman Sachs executive Raul Pau says the crypto industry exhibited remarkable structural resiliency amid the most recent price crash. I'll be breaking down his latest analysis for you right here in today's show. Also in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing five low cap altcoins positioning for big breakouts, according to crypto trader Michael Van de Pop. That's right. Crypto analyst Michael Van de Pop is tracking the prices of five low cap altcoins, which he thinks could break out. I'll be breaking this down for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, it's a bloodbath. Bitcoin, Ethereum and all the major altcoins currently bleeding and in the red, but where's the Bitcoin price likely to go next? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. So be sure to smash that subscribe button. That's right. And turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And before I kick off today's show, I want to give a special shout out to BlockFi, our show sponsor, the leading provider of financial products and services for crypto investors. Here's where you can put your crypto to work. They're currently paying out a 5% annual percentage yield on Bitcoin. So you can literally have your Satoshis work for you. They're also paying out a whopping 10% APY on stable coins. And they have a new product, which is their BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards Visa credit card. They just started shipping this bad boy out. Here's how it works, you earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on all purchases for life. And if you use my referral link in the description, you'll receive 3.5% Bitcoin back on all purchases for your first 90 days. They also ditched the annual fee, truly making this a no brainer to take advantage of this as well as an additional $250 crypto bonus with a deposit of $100 or more. Click my link in the description below. It'll take you here. Then click this yellow button that says sign up. You'll notice the referral code already pre-populated for you to take advantage of this special bonus. So what are you waiting for? Click the link right down below. Let's start stacking those sats and claim your Bitcoin rewards Visa credit card from BlockFi today. All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV. A lot of volatility in the market and lots to cover. So let's dive right in. Bitcoin's quick run up above 40K during the early New York trading session on Thursday, lost momentum midway as traders decided to secure short-term profits. The benchmark crypto shed up to 12% after topping out at 40000 $440 on Coinbase. It reached an intraday low of $36,400 ahead of the London opening bell on Friday, showcasing upside resilience amongst traders near the $40,000 level. As you can see right here in this chart, the Bitcoin price pulls back after testing its 200-day simple moving average. Now let's discuss the technicals and looming regulations. Concerns about stricter crypto market regulations have created headwinds for an otherwise choppy but solid Bitcoin price recovery. In retrospect, the Bitcoin slash USD exchange rate had crashed to $30,000 on May 19th after news of China's ban on crypto transactions hit the wire. And in the same week, United States President Joe Biden's administration targeted regional crypto investors by making it mandatory to report transactions over $10,000 to the IRS, creating more downside pressure on Bitcoin and similar digital assets. Now, do you feel all this FUD is engineered and orchestrated at the same time? Well, check out this interesting tweet from Nikki Thyssen. He wrote, so in a time period of two weeks, we have Elon Musk, Edward Snowden, China, and Biden all have a huge influence on Bitcoin, the environment, security, and taxes, huge drop in value after every message. Is that a simple coincidence or is that a smart plan? Either way, it's an opportunity knocking. He's right. It is what it is. Take advantage of these dips. BTFD all day, 25.8. Meanwhile, concerns about higher inflation kept Bitcoin from pursuing deeper downside moves. The last big inflation report in the U.S. showed the figures ranging around 4.2%, which is about 2.2% higher than the Federal Reserve's expectations. Now, ideally, that could have prompted the U.S. Central Bank to taper down its current expansionary policies, but the officials agreed that inflationary spikes were transitory in nature. The mixed fundamental 
signals have pushed Bitcoin's price into a choppy trading range with 35,000 acting as an interim support and 40,000 serving as interim resistance. That's right, 40,000 and 42,000 are key critical resistance levels we need to break to continue our bullish momentum and climb right back on up. Meanwhile, ARK Invest's CEO, Kathy Wood, attempted to calm down fears regarding stricter scrutiny over Bitcoin entities. Speaking at the Consensus 2021 conference earlier this week, the celebrated tech investor said it's impossible to shut down cryptocurrencies, reiterating her views that regulators would eventually need to wrap their minds around blockchain assets. She's right. You cannot shut down the centralized currencies such as Bitcoin, quoting her here. I think the competitive dynamic in the rest of the world is helping us in the U.S. I think it's been good, Wood said in an interview last week. And on declining institutional investments in the crypto space, Wood noted that investors have paused their capital flow into Bitcoin and other rival assets over the questionable environmental profile from the Elon Musk FUD because Elon Musk is a FUD puppet. Quoting Max Kaiser right here, Elon is actually a government apparatchik, meaning he's working for the Communist Party. He exists entirely on carbon credits. He got the tap on the shoulder and he's been tasked with trying to go after Bitcoin. You got Janet Yellen, you got Jay Powell, and you got the central bankers, you got the IMF, and you got Christine Lagarde. You got a lot of folks that are attacking Bitcoin now because they, of course, understand it's a threat to them. And I think that Elon got the tap on the shoulder as well. I think that NBC SNL performance is a part of that to essentially create a mythological creature that can be used as propaganda and he's being used as a propaganda tool. I agree 100%. Let me know if you agree in the comments right down below. Half the solution is understanding the problem, said Kathy Wood during her consensus conference. She also shared the following. This auditing of what miners, certainly in North America, are willing to do around how much of their electricity usage is generated by renewables is going to bring that topic into stark relief and will encourage an acceleration in the adoption of renewables beyond which otherwise would have taken the place. She added that institutional buying in the Bitcoin market would resume on the cryptocurrencies improving green profile. Also like to point out that Kathy Wood's ARK Invest is still bullish in buying the dip. She increased their Coinbase share holdings last week, buying another 223,000 units of the stock to push its net exposure to the NASDAQ listed crypto exchange above $1 billion. That's right. The big institutions are buying the dip. Only the weak hands are selling. Right now, the whales are accumulating. That's the name of this game. This is chess, not checkers. And as Plan B points out, nobody who bought Bitcoin and hodled for four plus years ever lost money, ever. That, my friend, is a fact. And if you're not familiar with the Stock to Flow X model, it predicts a $288,000 Bitcoin price before the end of this year. And as Altcoin Daily points out, over $2.2 billion worth of Bitcoin options contracts expire today. Expect volatility, which is precisely what we're currently witnessing in the crypto market. And before I break down our next story of the day, speaking of volatility, crypto analyst Justin Bennett says more volatility incoming and warns some traders will be shaken out of the market, as well as the recent Bitcoin crash revealing resiliency of the crypto markets and lack of systemic risk, according to macro guru Raul Powell, as well as I share with you five low cap altcoins positioning for big breakouts, according to crypto trader Michael Van Day Pop. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, everything is currently correcting and in the red we have bitcoin currently down seven percent trading just above thirty six thousand six hundred we have ethereum down eight percent trading just above twenty five hundred dollars chain link down fifteen percent trading just above twenty nine bucks cardano down ten percent trading at a dollar fifty four xrp down twelve percent trading at eighty nine cents and dogecoin down seven percent trading at thirty one cents all right now let's break down our next story of the day analyst justin bennett expects that crypto investors will face much more volatility in the weeks ahead. Bennett argues that the recent crash in Bitcoin's price was driven by wealthy players who now have the opportunity to increase their positions in Bitcoin. Checking out these recent tweets from Justin Bennett, he tweeted, today's rally is nice to see. And just FYI, this was a few days back. But don't forget who just took Bitcoin from $65,000 to $30,000. Those institutions now need to accumulate. That won't happen in a day. It can't. How do they buy lower? They shake out weak hands. Expect more volatility over the next few weeks. He called it. And continuing here, he wrote, apparently some of you think I'm referring to Elon laughing out loud. He did not take Bitcoin down. Institutions did. And someone responded, what about retail that used leverage to the extreme? And Justin Bennett responded, institutions use that to their advantage to force liquidations, which cause more panic, which triggers more liquidations and so on. As I pointed out, this is chess, not checkers. There's of course mass manipulation by institutions and whales because they want to buy it back even cheaper so they can continue to increase their positions and take profits. Now here's a response from Greg 
Morse, he wrote, Justin, I wonder how long it will take institutions to fill theirs and their clients' orders at cheap prices, for example, Goldman Sachs, until they finally let the price rise and make them their clients and strong-handed retail hodlers get rich. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments right down below. He also tweeted, just checking in, my feed is filled with V-bottom scenarios for Bitcoin. The only way to get a V-shaped recovery is if the institutions allow it. As I mentioned yesterday, if they need longer to accumulate, likely Bitcoin stays lower and precisely what we're witnessing in the market right now. He also wrote, everyone wanted institutions in the game. Well, they're here. That means we are playing by their rules now. Real talk. And before I break down our next story of the day, this Bitcoin crash reveals resiliency of the crypto markets and lack of systemic risk, according to macro guru Raul Powell, as well as I share with you five low cap altcoins positioning for big breakouts, according to crypto trader Michael Van Day Pop. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap. Sitting just above 1.5 trillion. Yesterday, we were above 1.7 trillion. So a lot of liquidity is fleeing the crypto markets. We have 137 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. And Bitcoin dominance at 43.2% with the Ethereum dominance at 18 0.6%. Now checking out the top gainers within the top 100, we have Theta Fuel, virtually the only one in the green, up 7.5%, trading at 32 cents. All the rest are in the red, so let's check out the top losers. We have Engine Coin down 24%, trading at $1.42. Terra down 23%, trading at $5.53. Harmony down 23%, trading at 8.9 cents. Nexo down 23%, trading at $1.94. And Telcoin down 22%, trading at 2.8 cents. And as I continue scrolling down, you just see massive losses in the altcoin market. That's because when there is a Bitcoin correction, the alts take a beating. The worst, it is what it is. So if you're currently getting wrecked, that means you probably have overexposure to too many altcoins and you should probably be hodling more BTC, the king of all crypto. Now let's check out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we're currently rated at 21 in extreme fear. Yesterday was a 27, last week a 19, and last month a 59 in greed. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That can be a great buying opportunity, aka BTC. TFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. All right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Former Goldman Sachs executive Raul Powell says the crypto industry exhibited remarkable structural resiliency amid the most recent price crash. Powell, the current chief executive of Real Vision, says the crypto industry largely absorbed the downtick in price without punishing anyone but speculators. Quoting him in this tweet storm right here, something to get your head around. Headline, a major asset class crashed 42% in 14 days, wiping out 1.02 trillion in value and an orgy of liquidation of people up to 100x leverage with very low regulation. Many tokens fell up to 70%, including unregulated lending and borrowing biz. And then he follows beneath the headline, crypto had a major, major VAR shock test and nothing happened. Leverage liquidation was offset by over collateralization. No one was left holding the baby. No firm went under. The Fed didn't need to step in. DeFi didn't break and carried on near normal. There was no daisy chains of collateral losses. There was no collateral pressure. Stable coins remained stable. A few exchanges went down for an hour or two. No exchange big losses occurred. No need to mutilize losses either. No protocol failed. No firms needed rapid funding. And he continues, no one had open-ended losses. The system didn't break. It offered zero systemic risk to the broader financial world. Speculators lost money. And that is it. That's right. Retail investors and speculators are the only ones selling their crypto during these times to the big institutions. And he concludes, this was what I first saw in crypto back in 2012, a new anti fraud agile financial system that doesn't break in times of stress where ownership of assets is clear and losses are not mutilized to taxpayers. This was a big two weeks for crypto and for the future financial system. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the macro guru himself. And before I break down our final story of the day, and I share five low cap altcoins positioning for big breakouts, according to crypto trader, Michael Van Day Pop. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 800 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also have some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including my daily letter, which goes out to over 30,000 subscribers every single day. To subscribe, visit letter.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also have a blog I update daily, which could be found at cryptonewsyes.com. Also be sure to smash that subscribe button right below this video in the description and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day just like this you can also find me on spotify the home of the joe rogan experience as well as apple's itunes you can also follow me on twitter my twitter handle is crypto news 
Yes, and for those of you on Facebook, I do have a private crypto Facebook group entitled Crypto Alchemy. To join it, click this link, request to join. I'll be sure to plug you in. And for those of you on Telegram, I do have a private crypto Telegram chat, which is uncensored. To join it, click this link. You'll automatically be added, and I'm looking forward to connecting with you personally on the inside. And for those of you on TikTok, be sure to follow me there. All right, now let's break down our final story of the day. Crypto analyst Michael Van Day Pop is tracking the prices of five low cap altcoins, which he thinks could break out. Van Day Pop tells his 320,000 Twitter followers that the scalable blockchain network Elron EGLD will likely bounce off of a major support level and route to an all-time high. Quoting him right here, quite following this old chart and path pretty fine. Crucial resistance zone found around 3,000 to 3,200. Crucial support to hold around 1,700 to 2,100, probably continuing the bull cycle too. And he included this graph you can see right here in your screen, which shows you the bullish momentum. But checking out the Elron price after the recent crash today, we're currently trading at $102 and down 9% for the day. How many of you are currently bullish? on Elron? Let me know in the comments right down below. Next up, Van Pop is also tracking the smart contract platform Phantom FTM. FTM is the 97th ranked asset by market cap and at this time is currently trading at 31 cents down about 12% for the day, quoting him right here, this one crashed heavily after a big surge, like most altcoins. I'm expecting that we're holding here as we've reached a crucial area. Resistances also lined out, those need to break. And he shared this graph right here. How many of you are currently bullish on Phantom? Let me know in the comments below. Next on the traders list is the blockchain platform Ziliqua, ZIL, which is currently trading at 10.8 cents at this time, down just above 14% for the day. He's expecting a big rally as long as support holds. He wrote, structure loss, like on many alt coins has to break above 295 to 300 sats for continuation a crucial area to hold 220 to 240 sats how many of you are currently bullish on zil let me know below next up Van Day pop says that the centralized public network hedera hashgraph hbar has been doing quite well hbar is currently the 54th rank asset by market cap and is currently trading just above 23 cents down 10.4 percent for the day quoting him right here this one actually did quite well beautiful bounce from the 480 sats area and made new highs. Area around 560 sats, I'd prefer to see holding for continuation and included this graph. How many of you are currently bullish on Hedera Hashgraph? Let me know in the comments below. The analyst also notes that Telcoin, T-E-L, could break the new all-time highs. Tel is a crypto project designed for mobile operators and is currently trading at 3.2 cents at this time, down 11.7% for the day. Quoting him right here, this one made a massive crash, but immediately bounced back. The critical area found around 5,000 to 5,500. If that holds, another attack of the 7,700 to 8,300 sats range should happen. Breaking that, then we hit new all-time highs. How many of you are currently bullish on Telcoin? Let me know below. And if you're not bullish on any of these alts, which alts in particular are you most bullish on during this bull run? Holla at your boy. Now for a quick recap of what I cover with you right here in today's show. Bitcoin tumbles below $36,000 as ARK invest Kathy Wood addresses Bitcoin regulatory fears. Also in today's show, I shared that crypto analyst Justin Bennett says that more volatility is incoming and warns some traders will be shaken out of the market. Also in today's show, I shared that the recent Bitcoin crash reveals resiliency of the crypto markets and lack of systemic risk, according to macro guru Raul Powell. Also shared with you five low cap altcoins positioning for big breakouts, according to crypto trader Michael Van Day Pop. So where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go next? Let me know in the comments right down below. Well, that's going to conclude today's show. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and journeying along with me inside this incredible crypto matrix. If you gain value out of today's show, be sure to smash that subscribe button. That's right. And turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And real quick, before I go, I want to give a special shout out to BlockFi, where you can put your crypto to work and earn a 5% annual percentage yield on Bitcoin. So you can literally have your Satoshis work for you. You can also earn 10% APY on stable coins. And they have a new product, which is a BlockFi Bitcoin rewards visa credit card, where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on all purchases for life. And by using my referral link in the description right down below, there's a special promo where you'll receive 3.5% Bitcoin back on all purchases for your first 90 days. I also like to point out that they ditch their annual fee, truly making this a no-brainer to take advantage of this as well as up to a $250 crypto bonus with a deposit of $100 or more. Click the link right down below. It'll take you here, then click this yellow button that says sign up. You'll notice the referral code already pre-populated for you to take advantage of this special bonus. So what are you waiting for? Click the link right down below. Let's start stacking those sats. Claim your Bitcoin rewards Visa credit card and I'll catch you on tomorrow's episode. Peace.